morning. morning. A very happy, blessed Easter to all as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Last year we weren't able to celebrate Easter because of COVID, so it's great to be able to come into the Lord's house. And because He lives, we too will live for all eternity. Welcome to all who are visiting today. It's great to have you with us this morning, and we hope that uh, you may be able to come back and join us again soon. I've um, been asked to announce that uh, Mike Box Collection is today. Uh, next Sunday, we will have youth confirmation in the second service at 1015, and there will be communion in both services next week on April uh, 11th. Uh, also, um, you'll find in your bulletin, it should be a little slip like this, uh, about our good news class. If you are interested, I would just ask, maybe you could just write down your name and when you leave today, just uh, put it in the offering plate as you leave, just to give us an idea of, of how many books to order. This is not a, a commitment, uh, but just to give us an idea of possibly how many. What this is, is a year ago, we had a good news class, and we had about 50 people who attended here at St. Paul's. Uh, this serves two purposes. Uh, for our members who want to go through a review of the main teachings of the Bible, uh, all the main teachings are covered in the six chief parts of the catechism, uh, the um, the sacraments, the Ten Commandments, prayer, the Apostles' Creed, uh, the Trinity, creation. Uh, we look at everything. It's amazing what we can cover. So it's a review who, for those uh, who would like to go through it, but also for those uh, who do not have membership in our church who would like to find out uh, what is our church all about, what do we teach, and what do we believe it's an opportunity to sit and go through this and no commitment. Nobody has to join or do anything. Nobody is ever asked to read. There are no tests. You just sit and listen and uh, hear the good news of the Bible and a person uh, can, without any commitment, do what they want afterwards. Uh, but we are tentatively planning this on April 21st for five Wednesdays, an hour and a half. And again, not a commitment, but if you think you might, just put your name down, put it in the offering plate, uh, so we have an idea possibly of how many uh, books to um, order. Um, and um, uh, again, and if for some reason somebody is really interested in the class, but Wednesday night doesn't work, just put that little note there. Maybe we could uh, do something else as well. Our worship today follows our bulletin, and we are going to raise our voices and sing this morning, Jesus Christ is risen today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We confess our sins. Merciful and loving Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By our sinful actions and our failure to do the good you desire, we pray you to grant to the penitent absolution and peace that freed from the burden of guilt they enjoy the gift of a clear conscience. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we delight in God's forgiving love, let us be reconciled to one another and share the peace of the Lord. Set our minds on things above that we may walk in love in this earthly journey and that we may dwell with you forever in the heavenly places of light and life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the dead of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle lesson for this Easter Sunday is recorded for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 1, uh, Paul sharing the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance to, with the Scripture and then he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise. The Easter Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as I told you. And they went and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We speak together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, bright of light, very God of very God, begotten of being king of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made.
God's grace, mercy, and peace be and abide with you. Our text comes from Job chapter 19, verse 25. It's the theme of the sermon hymn. Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives and will at last stand on the earth. Dear friends of Jesus Christ our Lord, most of us have had loved ones that we have lost through death. And at a time like that, these words are very comforting. I know that my Redeemer lives. Easter, how great to be here today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. But we really begin to appreciate what it means to have a Redeemer from the grave when we see a loved one lying cold and still in death. It's at times like this we learn to say from the very bottom of our hearts, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. At times like that, we find out by experience what the Apostle Peter meant when he said and wrote, God, who by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, has given us a new birth so that we live and hope for an inheritance that isn't destroyed or defiled. At times like that, we begin to understand what a glorious privilege it is to be able to say and believe with Job of old, I know that my Redeemer lives. Job, who first spoke the words of our text by inspiration of God, did so at a, at a time of great sorrow and loss. But he had absolutely no doubt that he did indeed have a living Redeemer. He said in the words of our text, I know my Redeemer lives. He, he did not say, I, I, I think my Redeemer lives, or I hope that my Redeemer lives. He simply said, I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. To express only a hope is not enough when we stand in the face of death. We want to know you want to know. We all want to be sure. And by the grace of God, we too, without any hesitation or doubt, can Job, join Job in saying, I know my Redeemer lives. Jesus Christ is risen. Yes, He is risen indeed. We base our faith in the resurrection on the Word of God, which cannot lie, telling us that our Redeemer Jesus lives. The Bible, which was written by inspiration of God, given by God, God's Word, is a book in which God Himself talks to us. It is a book in which God Himself tells us everything that we need to know for salvation. And this book, again and again, the Bible, dozens and dozens and dozens of times, tells us that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. God tells us, that Jesus rose from the dead over and over again so that there may be absolutely no doubt about it. And he tells us in plain, simple little language that, that even a, children, a, a child can read and understand. We don't have to be some kind of a biblical scholar to be able to know and understand what the Bible says about this resurrection of Jesus Christ. We cannot say it any more simply or plainly than it was said by the angel. Remember in the gospel lesson, the women came out to the tomb early that Easter morning to further embalm and prepare the body of Jesus Christ. And the stone was rolled away and the angel met them and said, you know, who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth, he is not here. He is risen. Just as he said, come look at the place where the Lord lay. It is clear enough. What more do we want? The men who went into all the world to preach this gospel, this good news about Jesus Christ of the resurrection, were talking about things that they themselves had he seen and heard. What Peter said about the transfiguration of the Savior up on the mount, he could have said also about the resurrection. In a second letter he wrote, We have not followed cunningly devised fables 
when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. These disciples saw Jesus not just one time, but many times after the resurrection. And on Easter evening, when they could not believe that it was really Jesus, he ate and he drank with them. And he asked them to touch him and to make sure that that he was not just some ghost. They put their fingers into the print of the nail and they put their hand into the hole which the spear had made in his side. He was seen not just by one, not just by two, but by larger groups. And at one time, as we read in our epistle lesson, he showed himself alive to more than 500 people. He was the resurrected Lord. Yes, I know that my Redeemer lives. And it is important for us to know uh, this because he is our Redeemer. Our whole hope of eternity, our whole hope of salvation is tied up in Jesus Christ. Because you see, if, if Jesus Christ had not raised from the dead, then, then the whole Christian religion would be nothing but an absolute fraud. If Jesus Christ was not raised from the dead, then, then the Christian religion is, is nothing more than a religion that is deceiving people. Yet this day, if the Bible's teaching of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is not true, then all Christian hope is just built on on human imagination. Then we of all people are, are to be most miserable, most pitied, as the Apostle Paul says. But we know, we know it is not this way. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He is, the Bible says, the first fruits of those who are made alive. You've heard me say that before. When the first apple appears in, in the springtime or in the summer, that tells us more apples are to come. And so it is with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His is the first fruit. It tells us more resurrections are yet to come. The resurrection is a guarantee that Jesus Christ is not a failure that He is not a false Savior, that He had come into this world to save us and all people from sin. Jesus Christ came into this world to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ came into this world to deliver us from the fear of death and from a lifetime of slavery to sin. This Jesus Christ rose from the dead He's the same one who three days before on Good Friday died on that cross. And he had such a horrible death. He had been executed as a criminal because God took and put our sins, the sins of all the world, upon Jesus Christ just exactly as foretold in the Old Testament. Because you see the wages, the payment, There's a payment due for sin, for wrong. The wages, the payment of sin is death. Because the justice of God says that that the soul that sins, it's just just and right that it should die. Therefore, though, God in love for us took all our sins, everything that we deserve, and put it all on Jesus. And thereby Jesus Christ bowed His head, gave up His life, and died on the cross of Calvary. As our substitute, he suffered what should have happened to each and every one of us because of our sins. But all of this would be meaningless without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The cross without an empty tomb would bring us nothing but unrelieved uh, gloom and, and, and hopelessness. But because we can say with assurance to the whole world, I know that my Redeemer lives. We can also say with full conviction of the heart, I know, I know all my sins are forgiven by God's love in Jesus. I know that I have been saved from sin, from death and eternal damnation. God, by raising our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, declared that the sins for which He suffered are now our sins, completely wiped off the books. He uh, suffered it all for us. We need no punishment 
to pay for those sins. Jesus did it for us. But those were sins that we committed. He suffered for us. The Bible tells us the just for the unjust. And when God raised him from the dead, he was saying to us that that our sins are paid for. He was raised that we might be made right so that we can say with the Apostle Paul these beautiful words, Who shall lay any charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ that died, yet that is risen again. And everyone, every one of us can say by faith that Jesus Christ suffered for us. And so his resurrection brings hope and forgiveness to everyone on this earth. I can say it, and you can say it without any doubt. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. And because he lives, our life here on this earth can be a life of of hope and joy and assurance of eternity to come. It's interesting to see that that the founders of all the other world religions are dead and in the tombs. Muhammad is dead and in the tomb. Buddha is dead, never to live again. Confucius is dead. But Christians, we have a living Lord. In these days of uncertainty, it is good and comforting for us to know our Redeemer lives that He has overcome death, that He is Almighty God, that the stone that was rolled away from that door of the tomb was not able to keep Him in the grave. For if He could come out of the grave, we know that He is able to save us. All of us who put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who died for us and rose again. And again, this living Redeemer is not only our hope in life, but he is also our hope at the time of death. His help never forsakes us. Even in the grave, we never need to despair. Now we know that it is a very heartbreaking thing to see our our loved ones die. And think about this, it is also a a very terrible thing for us to think that we will die someday, that someday we are going to be dead and we will no longer be living upon this earth. But Jesus Christ's tomb is empty. When we stand at the grave of our loved ones, we have hope. And as someday we approach death ourselves, we need not be afraid, for our living Redeemer has given us the promise of everlasting life. He assures us, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, yet he were dead, yet shall he live. And the message of Easter is again and again and again, because he lives, we too shall live for all eternity. God has accepted his sacrifice. He paid for the sins of the whole world. We will live again as we put our faith and trust in Christ Jesus our Lord. And believing all of this, we can say with the Apostle Paul, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the moment of our greatest sorrow and heartache, we can say with Job these words, I know that my Redeemer lives and will at last stand on the earth and afterward my skin will surround this body and in my flesh... I will see God. May all of us, may each and every one of you have a very blessed uh, Easter, a day of resurrection celebration as you fill your hearts and your thoughts with the wonderful comfort that we know that our Redeemer lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah, amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please let us rise and sing.
pray. Heavenly Father, on that Easter day, what glorious, happy, good news as, as they heard He is not here. He is risen just exactly as He has said. We thank You that Jesus is the resurrection and the life and that He broke the bonds of death. He paid the price, sin, Satan, and death that we might live forever. <coughs> Help us this day and and every day with Job be able to say triumphantly, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would grant healing to those in our midst, our, our loved ones, Brett and Diane, Anna, Mary, Sue, Glenn, Gloria, Jackie, Melba, Ken, Carolyn, and Michelle. Be with them and help them. And we rejoice in the anniversary this week, celebrated by Tobias and Melba. Grant them many blessings yet to come. And we give you thanks for another year of life. Those in our congregation celebrating birthdays, Stella, Danielle, Delbert, Troy, Janine, and Ron. Heavenly Father, we also give you thanks that Jacob and Brittany Gilbert had been blessed with the gift of a son, Grayson Jacob, and ask that you would be pleased soon to receive him into your kingdom through the waters of baptism. Be with mother and child and all family. We ask this in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you continue to be with our nation and help us all every day rejoice at the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you now and forever. Amen. Please let us rise for a closing prayer. O Lord, you have given us grace this day to hear in our ears the good news of our Lord's resurrection and to receive with our lips his crucified and risen body and blood. Grant that by this holy communion, We will be sustained in faith, equipped to fulfill the good purpose of your love in our daily lives and be kept holy and blameless until he comes to bring us into the place of everlasting life, light and life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. We will uh, remain seated for the first three verses and rise for verse four and five. <laughs> 